all the all the candidates, with the exception of Saul Mendes of the Broad Front Party, are right wing candidates. Uh, Nito Cortizo, the front runner right now, right now, is from El PRD. El PRD was the party of the military regime that governed between 1968 and 1989, that was ousted by a U.S. invasion in 1989. Uh, the CD party, or Democratic Change Party, and his candidate Robolo Rux, is the party of Ricardo Martinelli, the supermarket business uh, a politician who governed Panama between 2009 and 2014, whom is currently being tried in this in this in jail for for an eavesdropping scandal and for corruption. And the other parties, the the govern the currently the party that is currently governing the, the Partido Panamenista, uh, the his candidate Jose Blandon is very far away in the numbers. He has, has approximately 10, 12 percent of what has been reported so far. And Ricardo Lombana is an independent candidate who has presented himself as, a, as an anti-corruption champion. He is a far right candidate. He has some libertarian positions even uh, based on having a very small state, little government intervention in the in the economy. The election has revolved around corruption. The Odebrecht scandal has has reached all three of the main parties, and that has weakened their credibility in uh, with the electorate, and also a scandal within the National Assembly. The current president does not have a sufficient majority in the assembly, so it has tried to buy the votes of candidate through the through through the the, the naming of of their co of, of of people that work for them in the government. And they have used that to try and blackmail the legislature, which has fallen into this because effectively there is this huge corrupt scandal involving the, the legislature. So people, people, the, the, the election has, has centered on corruption. But the consequence of this is that Panama's deeper problems, deeper conflicts, inequality, exclusion, uh, marginalization have not been discussed in the campaign. That was going to be my next question, Richard. Were any issues missing from the campaign discourse? And what are the issues, tell us a bit more about that, which are important to Panama's working class, social movements, and unions? So we have currently a, a high growing economy. Panama's economy has been growing for many years now, but it is an economy that grows at the expense of its workers and of the environment. It is a highly unequal economy where it concentrates wealth and accumulation in the transit zone. It was basically the canal zone, and it is basically an economy that extracts rent from tr transit activity, be it through the canal, be it through the ports, or the financial and legal international global services. So it is an economy that, even though it it extracts massive amounts of wealth from capital movements, it concentrates these wealth on, on very few people. And most of Panamanian's workers are, are in a very precarious situation, very insecure working conditions, and there is growing unemployment as well. So the growing concerns of the great majority of the people have not been as not, have not been included within the electoral agenda. How have the elites been able to compensate for this disconnect between political discourse and people's realities? They have been they have done this through through very deeply entrenched uh, clientelistic networks that managed to to try and buy off votes in the poor communities of Panama. And this has been what has allowed them to remain in power and ha what has allowed them to to have a lead in this election so far. Some of the other issues in this campaign has been a water crisis, has been a crisis of the educational system of health. There is a massive social security crisis in the moment. The system is about to go bankrupt. And there is there's growing concerns among workers that the system will be privatized. So, so there, the the campaign didn't really focus on the main issue in Panama: economic inequality, inequality in access to quality public services. The only campaign and candidate who did was the broad front candidate Saul Mendes, the only left-leaning candidate. The remaining candidates basically competed on who could better administer the inequality in Panama, the system in Panama, or who was less tainted by the corruption scandals. It is very, very clear that the next government will attempt to defend the current development model that Panama has pursued since the invasion in 1989. It is based on neoliberal policies and a very unequal and segregated country. And they will do whatever it takes to try and conserve this system because it is the foundation of their power. 
So it is, it is inevitable that in the first few months of the next government, when they have to tackle some of these issues, especially social security reform, they will face mass resistance from social and popular movements. And that and these, these math process will probably make the difference towards the next election. So we the, the current political crisis that there is in Panama with the lack of legitimacy that traditional politicians and their parties have is an expression of the, of the weakening or of the crisis of the economic system. They have tried to avoid discussing this issue, especially one very important one, that is the Panama Papers scandal. This has not even been a part of the electoral debate because that would touch on the interest of the elite. But they will not be able to hide these issues for long, and they will be forced by popular pressure to have to bring these issues into the agenda. Um, because you were a pre-candidate for the broad front, how does the program of that party differ in the most important ways from the rest of the parties that are dominating today? The first one is it is that the only anti neoliberal policy. It believes that the state has a role to play in the economy, that it has a that it has a role to play through public companies, through strategic planning, through the guaranteeing of rights, of social rights, of health, of of education, of food, of 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 housing, and that is very different from the programs of other parties who are basically who believe in this model of. Of, of of neoliberal growth, of liberalization of the economy, a program that has a neoliberal program that has destroyed the country's agricultural sector, industrial sector. So the main difference is it's a platform that's based on guaranteeing the social rights of the population through a stronger role for the government. Thank you so much, Richard. We've been speaking to Richard Morales, a political scientist who is in Panama, joining us with some very important insight on today's elections.